Namaste and good afternoon. Welcome to today's Facebook session presented by Apollo Hospitals on the occasion of World Hepatitis Day. Dr. Srinidhi Chidambaram here. Whether it's Omicron, whether it's monkeypox, or whether it's any other trending health issues, these often tend to occupy our minds foremost. But we must remember that at all times, good health means that all the various organ systems in our body need to work without disease and in optimal condition. So it's important to look at our body and all the organ systems as a whole and take care of ourselves, understand about various kinds of diseases that can affect the body and also learn how to prevent them and also how to seek medical help. And one such very important disease is hepatitis. Hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver Mostly it's caused by viral infection. There are five main types of hepatitis, which are referred to as A, B, C, D, E. And these five types are the ones which are of greatest concern because they are the ones that cause the burden of illness and death. And they do have a potential for outbreaks and spread as well. Uh, in fact, uh, there are uh, various goals that health organizations have saying that we should eliminate hepatitis B and C as public health threats by 2030, and that would prevent millions of infections and save so many lives. So it's a very important topic, and we need to understand all about hepatitis today and make sure that we are well informed on what to do, how to identify it, how to prevent it, how to vaccinate ourselves, and also how to seek treatment early, and also what the latest treatment options are. So to uh, give us his valuable insights, I welcome Dr. Naveen Polavarapu, who is the head of the Department for Gastroenterology and Liver Transplant Services, Apollo Hospitals, Jubilee Hills, Hyderabad. Dr. Naveen finished his MBBS uh, from the NTR University of Health Sciences in 2001. He did his MRCP, FRCP in gastroenterology from Liverpool Deanery and further pursued advanced endoscopy fellowship training in ERCP and endoscopic ultrasound at the Aintree University Hospital. Uh, Dr. Naveen further pursued his training in liver transplant fellowship at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Birmingham. His research was on cholangiocarcinoma, which is cancer of the bile duct. And he's had many over 30 publications, in fact, in peer-reviewed journals, published a number of abstracts. And uh, he re relocated back to India in 2014, has been working at Apollo Hospitals. And he has really catalyzed the development of the state-of-the-art endoscopy suite and the transplant uh, department and the department of gastroenterology spearheading the medical aspects of liver transplant and has done more than 400 liver transplants at Apollo Hyderabad, very good results. And uh, his main interests are in uh, liver, pancreas and bile duct disease, transplant hepatology and other complex gastrointestinal conditions and advanced endoscopic procedures. Dr. Naveen, thank you so much for joining us here today on our Facebook session. Uh, thank you for your participation. So, we look forward to hearing from you uh, all about uh, an overview really about hepatitis. So we can begin by first talking about uh, what exactly is hepatitis. And uh, people often get confused about these different alphabets that are there at the end of this. So uh, what, what is it all about? What are the types? Yeah, sure. And first of all, let me just uh, thank you, Dr. Chidambara, for the kind uh, introduction and also to uh, to the Apollo group and the, the, the Facebook for uh, having this important session on, on a very important day, the July uh, 28th. Um, so I think uh, let's talk about the hepatitis as uh, we've been discussing. Uh, so anywhere inflammation is, is classed as itis, okay, because it's happening in the liver, we call it as hepatite. Okay, so if you put in the layman terms, it is just inflammation in the liver. Okay, so there are a number of reasons for this inflammation in the liver. Um, the most common reasons that we see is one is the alcohol, which often people know that alcohol damages liver. So that's one of the reasons, uh, which is one of the bigger reasons. Apart from that, viral hepatitis. Now, hepatitis, there are different types of uh, alphabetical viruses, which we'll discuss uh, in next, uh, later on in the talk. But uh, essentially, hepatitis B and C, uh, B for Bravo and C for Charlie, these are the main viruses which can affect the liver and ca can cause long-term damage to the liver. Uh, along with that, the uh, bigger element in the 
in the in the room that was, shall I say is the fatty liver. We seeing often a lot of people getting more fatty livers, you know, getting obese. And uh, unfortunately, India have been becoming uh, the diabetic capital of the world, uh, especially with the punky obesity or the uh, you know tummy being bigger. Uh, that fat gets deposited in the liver much more quickly, and that causes the fatty liver. So fatty liver also will progress uh, in the future um, to cause scarring and then inflammation and then damage to liver causing cirrhosis. So these are three most common reasons. But of course, there are different other reasons like medications, drug induced, herbal medications, Ayurvedic medications sometimes, um, autoimmune condition. There are so many other different reasons, including iron deposition, copper deposition, excess amount of them can also cause these kind of inflammation and damage to the liver. So uh, coming back to hepatitis, effective hepatitis, so uh, what are the different uh, uh, viruses that can cause and uh, would you also like to tell us about uh, the ways in which they're transmitted and risk factors? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's very important to know this because um, um, what I say often in my talks is liver and hepatitis and the liver, liver cirrhosis are a silent killer. Unless we actually um, uh, check it regularly, we would not know if they have the viruses. Okay, and often the patients come with symptoms; it's already too advanced. You know, um, the already cirrhosis has set in, and they would have developed all the complications from cirrhosis is when people set in. That's why it's important to know that we always should be checking regularly for these viruses. Now, coming to what type of viruses we have, um, so far science have detected or discovered uh, five different types of viruses in hepatitis. Hepatitis starts from alphabetical A, B, C, D, and E. But of course, there are also, along with these five viruses, there are other viruses uh, which can also cause uh, viral hepatitis. But commonly, we talk about these type of viruses. Now, to make it easy, I think we should class these viruses based on the route of transmission and how, in terms of, you know, how it affect their uh, long-term damage to liver. For example, hepatitis A and E, so A for alpha and E for echo, generally are transmitted because of any food poison. Okay, so you acquire this virus through food poisoning or water contamination or food contamination. The virus goes and sets in the liver. It causes inflammation to the liver and causes jaundice weakness, tiredness, and sometimes diarrhea. Now, most of these uh, hepatitis A virus and E virus infections are self-limiting infections. They do settle down by themselves. Very, very rarely, the disease can progress, inflammation progresses to cause damage or necrosis to the liver or tissue cell death, um, and then causes uh, acute liver failures. But that proportion is very rare. Most of the acute uh, hep A or hepatitis A and E infections, they settle down by themselves. But of course, you need to be under the liver specialist or a gastroenterologist so who can be able to monitor that the, the jaundice or bilirubin is peaking and it is coming down rather than going up and causing that. Okay, so that's what about hepatitis A and E. The hepatitis B and C are transmitted predominantly through blood to blood contacts. Okay, for example, people having blood transfusions or having hemodialysis. You know, people who are on, you know, dialysis machines, you know, uh, contaminated hemodialysis that you can get hepatitis B and C through that. Um, and also needle share, uh, sharing, you know, uh, using the same needles for injections, drug abuse, IV drug abuse, intravenous drug abuse. These are the common other routes of transmission that we see for both hepatitis B and C. So it's mainly blood to blood contact. Um, of course, in hepatitis B, there's also risk of transmission through sexual transmission. So somebody who's got hepatitis B and um, you know have a uh, unprotected sex, they can transmit the virus to the, to the other person. The third important way, uh, route of transmission, particularly for hepatitis B, is a vertical transmission, or from the mother to the baby. In fact, if you look at the Chinese population, this disease is very common or very rampant in that in that area. That's primarily because of vertical transmission from mother to baby. And as I said from the start. These viruses are silent killers. Nobody knows whether they have the virus or not unless they get it checked. In fact, the WHO or World Health Organization estimated that um, in the current population, there is around 2 billion people who are being infected with hepatitis B and C. So in other words, 2 billion is more than the Indian population. So Indian population is roughly 1.3 billion. So we're talking about much bigger than that uh, population which are infected with hepatitis B 
Yet all these patients do not know, all these people do not know that they have hepatitis B and C. In fact, it also says that WHO, that nine out of 10 people don't even know that they have the virus. And so imagine this virus is spreading around. We don't know that we have the virus or they are infected virus. And you know, there are so many ways that people can get exposed to these viruses. And as I said, can get transmitted to blood to blood contact as well. And uh, not only that, the hepatitis B and C viruses have a hundred times more higher risk of causing liver cancer. Not necessarily, not only just the cirrhosis of the liver, but it increases the risk of having liver cancer by almost hundred times. So the most common reasons why we do liver transplants for these patients uh, is predominantly because of hepatitis B and C, along with the alcohol uh, etiology. Uh, so we have now discussed the types and we have also discussed some of the, the modes of transmission uh, and also how uh, what are the risk factors. Uh, how do you prevent uh, hepatitis? Uh, because we've heard that there are vaccines. So are there vaccines for all the types and which are the ones that are important? Thank you. That's a very good question. So um, as we all say, prevention is better than cure. Uh, and uh, uh, the most important prevention, I would say, is get yourself regularly checked, hepatitis B and C. Um, of course, there are vaccinations, but only for particular viruses, there are vaccinations. But it's important that we check the, uh, for the hepatitis B on a regular basis. Okay? So hepatitis B and C is just a simple blood test that we can check it. Along with that, you know, in a master health check or in any kind of routine health check, can incorporate hepatitis B and uh, B and C. Coming to the uh, prevention aspect, one is, as I said, detecting early is one part of preventing uh, the virus or not progressing towards having liver cirrhosis. Number two, number two is um, there are vaccinations for particular viruses like Hepatitis A and B have got vaccinations. So, uh, in fact, the uh, uh, ch uh, ch children born after you know uh, uh, 2000, uh, they all get universally vaccinated uh, in their childhood, uh, newborn babies. So, most of the most of these people, uh, kids are protected from hepatitis B because they, they get vaccinated. Uh, and hepatitis A, there are vaccinations which are available. So, we can prevent the infections by getting these vaccinations. For hepatitis C, there are no vaccinations available yet in the market, uh, in the world. However, hepatitis C treatment has been revolutionized uh, lately. Uh, so people who previously had hepatitis C infection, C for Charlie, uh, we used to have very you know, horrible medications, we had to give injections with a lot of side effects, with very little response. But nowadays with hepatitis C, we've got such a brilliant medications. We just need to take one tablet a day for about 12 weeks or three months and we can completely eradicate the virus. What is more important is people to come forward to get themselves so checked for these viruses because there are excellent treatments available. And as I said earlier, that if we don't detect these viruses, we don't treat these viruses, the risk of liver cancer increases by 100 times, and you also have a risk of developing cirrhosis and all the complications. So this is something which is in our hands, which we can treat, which we can prevent from any further complications. And don't forget, liver is a big chemical factory. It does more than 500 to 600 different functions. So whenever those functions are affected because of all these hepatitis or inflammation, um, liver takes a big hit. And along with that, all its functions get lost. And this liver is connected to different parts of the body like kidneys, heart, lungs. So when the liver gets affected, all the other organs will also start taking a hit and they will uh, get damaged. Um, so it's important that we protect the liver, understand what is happening and how to actually prevent uh, these uh, viruses. Uh, so I have a question here as to, you know, like when you say that people have to get tested, uh, are there also, uh, you know, there are certain symptoms that should prompt you to get tested or is it just that everybody, like how we have an annual check and we just do our CBC and other yeah. investigations, we need to also do this. Or are there any symptoms that, or, or you know, should there be something that triggers off that whole uh, investigation? Because I don't, I mean, in many of the health checks, uh, I'm not too sure whether, I mean, we think about hepatitis, you know, when uh, one largely thinks about the diabetes or uh, other ASR and lipids. Yeah, yeah. So to answer the question um, in one straight answer, everybody should be getting checked regularly. Because as I said, 
By the time you get symptoms related to hepatitis B, already patient would have had cirrhosis or significant damage to the liver. Very rarely in acute infections, people can get uh, jaundice and fever, but that's very, very rare. We don't see it often. And as I said, this virus gets transmitted silently and we would not have any symptoms. So we would be a lot of times, about 70 to 80 percent of the times, would miss that the patient has been infected already with hepatitis uh, because they don't have symptoms. So about 15 to 20 percent will develop jaundice and other symptoms. So, it's, so to answer the question, everybody every year should get checked for hepatitis uh, B and B and C so that we can treat those diseases. There are excellent treatments available for those uh, for those conditions. And um, let me just put another perspective to this. Hepatitis B is at least five times more common than HIV or AIDS. And, uh, you know, we talk about HIV and AIDS so many times, you know, time and again, we discuss about HIV. But hepatitis B is at least five times more common and more infective than, hepatitis, uh, than HIV. So you can imagine the, the extent or the, the scale of the, uh, the problem that we have with hepatitis, uh, hepatitis B. Uh, and also in India, do we have, I mean, like in a sense, is there one particular type which is more common or what, what is the uh, uh, prevalence in India yeah. of these various types? Yeah, so both hepatitis B and C are, are common in India, but uh, there is a variance in terms of north and south to a certain extent. Um, hepatitis C, we see more often in the north part of the India and hepatitis B, we see more often in, in, in the southern part. But what we realized is there are pockets of extensive, you know, or significant incidence or prevalence of the hepatitis B in certain areas. Uh, we, uh, as part of the Save the Liver Foundation program, uh, we, uh, we did uh, mass uh, campaigning and testing for the hepatitis B. And uh, both in, in fact, not uh, both, where Andhra Pradesh um, uh, and also Telangana, uh, um, uh, Bangalore, the Karnataka area, and also part of Tamil Nadu, those four states, we did uh, the mass campaigning and we checked uh, for this hepatitis B, we, we tested about one lakh population uh, at that time. And there are pockets where the infection of hepatitis B is almost in the, in the, in the tune of 10%. Out of 100 people, 10 of those people are infected with hepatitis B. That's a quite high number. So there are pockets of very high prevalence areas in certain areas. And um, I mean, I can quote a, a, a patient who um, you know, he came with having liver cancer and we checked back uh, why he developed liver cancer. Young guy who got a hepatitis B related cancer, liver cancer. And we checked his, his mother had a liver, died of liver cancer. His brother has got liver cancer. Um, and, uh, and also his sister uh, has got hepatitis B. When we trace back, she also had hepatitis B. And um, in that, not just in the family, and that we checked their, their, their street and a uh, few of the other people also had hepatitis B. So it is prevalent. We just had to identify these pockets. And I think that is why it's important that, you know, uh, government-led programs are very important. So that is the reason why the World Health Organization has created the July 28th as a World Hepatitis Day so that all of us, uh, public, the medical fraternity, and the organizations, including the central government and the state government, work together um, uh, so that the unified goal of identifying these people so that we can prevent these diseases. We can prevent from progressing towards cirrhosis. So, uh, that's why it's important to uh, make, uh, you know, government also a part of this program um, so that we can, uh, you know, we, uh, it, 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 uh, it, it, it's very sad to me that, you know, there's so much importance uh, has been given to HIV, but yet not to hepatitis B, which is five times more common. So I'm not dis disputing that HIV should not get importance. Of course, yes, definitely. But this should also get equal uh, response uh, rate for them to actually work on the diseases. So what would your advice be for pregnant women? I mean, I know that uh, I think in antenatal checkups, they do check for hepatitis B, yeah. but what, what, what should pregnant women or people about to get pregnant uh, be aware of? Yeah, very important question. And as I said earlier, the mother to baby transmission um, of the hepatitis B is very high, almost in the tune of 80 to 90 percent. So there's a high chance that the baby will get the infection if the mother has got very high viral load or if she's infected. So what we look at is whenever we see a mother being uh, pregnant and she's got hepatitis B, we check the viral load to see how high the viral load is and how much damage has happened to the liver. 
So we check it at the time when she was detected, and we also check it about 28 to 32 weeks uh, of pregnancy. If at that time the viral load is very high, then we'll start them on medications, the antiviral medications, which is just a tablet, one daily tablet, to reduce the viral load. The idea is by the time of the delivery, if the viral load is not detectable or very low in count, the risk of transmission to the baby will be markedly reduced. Along with that, as soon as the baby is born, we give them immunoglobulins or like a soldiers to protect this hepatitis B. So, because invariably at the time of delivery, whether it is a normal natural vaginal delivery or whether it is a cesarean delivery, they will the baby will get exposed to the hepatitis B virus during the process of the delivery. Um, so they will get exposed to hepatitis B. So you should be giving immunoglobulins to them or the soldiers so that we can protect that, uh, you know, fight that infection uh, instantaneously. Along with that, they should also get the universal vaccination program. So it's a three-stage process. So you reduce the viral load of the mother by giving medications if they're very high. You, uh, whatever the mode of delivery is, you should give immunoglobulins to the babies right away or the injections. And then you also carry on with giving vaccination. So as a final question, uh, unless you'd like to add something more, I just wanted to ask you, uh, apart from, you know, the vaccines and the regular screening, uh, what are the other preventive measures that people can take to, so that they don't get these hepatitis infections? Yeah. So uh, as we said earlier, it's always a blood to blood transmission that happens with hepatitis B and C. Um, so Always, whenever you go to, for example, men who go to barber shops, make sure that you use a clean uh, um, a shave or, you know, you don't transmit or use uh, shaved uh, razors or and stuff like that. Um, there should not be any, any source or chance of having a blood to blood contact. So making sure that you use a clean razor, you don't uh, use inject, uh, injection needles, you don't uh, share the needles. Uh, you don't share the brushes uh, because sometimes you can have bleeding gums and then and then it gets transmitted when you use say, another person uses the same brush. So you have to make sure that there is no blood to blood contact. Um, uh, uh, that would minimize your risk of transmission. And again, as I said, regularly please get yourself checked. And more important than that, hepatitis B, there are vaccinations which are available. So uh, all the high risk people like the uh, medical staff, the nursing staff. We all are universally, we all get vaccinated. But what I think is important is just not those people. Everybody in the world, every person in the world should be vaccinated um, so that we can prevent this uh, virus or them getting the virus. Everybody, you know, we, that this is where I think the media, the, the government will play a bigger role to yeah. educate people, sensitize them that everybody should, be get, should get vaccinated. It is not just the people who... Uh, who are in the high risk population that they should be vaccinated? Everybody in the world are, we should treat them as high risk and we should get them vaccinated. Absolutely. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Before um, yeah, well, a couple of things. I mean, um, we, we discussed most of it, uh, but very important message that I want to uh, get across to, uh, to everyone on this special day is, uh, um, is please get yourself checked regularly for hepatitis B and C. Um, if you are negative for hepatitis B, get yourself vaccinated, regardless of what other people say, get yourself vaccinated because if you do acquire this virus and it starts damaging the liver, it is a silent damage that happens. And a lot of people who come to our clinic, they come at a very advanced stage with having a lot of fluid in the tummy, fluid in the legs, having blood vomit and other complications. But then the damage has already been done and the only treatments which were available at that time would be liver transplant or you know some medications to optimize them, but the, for the uh, treatment options are very limited. Um, so I advise everyone, regardless of it, please make make yourself uh, aware of that there are these viruses which can which are preventable, which are treatable easily, provided we pick them up early. And the only way to pick them up is getting yourself regularly checked with it. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Dr. Naveen Polavarku, for this wonderful discussion. And I think these very strong messages of public awareness on hepatitis. So viewers, I do hope that you have uh, got this awareness now that you have to get yourself tested every year. You have to get yourself vaccinated, practice a safe lifestyle, and always be alert and aware. 
World Hepatitis Day takes place every year on 28th July, bringing the world together under the single theme of raising awareness so that the global burden of viral hepatitis comes down and to influence real change. So the theme is, I can't wait. So we can't and we shouldn't wait for a world without hepatitis and we need to work on it together to make it happen now. Thank you so much and namaste.